Hey kids, it's Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. Now this is my Triumph Speed Twin that I bought this year. I've owned it for six months now and lots of people have been asking me how I've been getting on with the bike. So in this video, I wanna give you my six month ownership review of the Triumph Speed Twin. If you're interested in this motorbike, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, the Triumph Speed Twin then. What an absolutely beautiful motorcycle, at least I think so, and that is why I bought one. If you're interested in this uh, uh, bike, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and stay tuned because in this video, what I'm gonna do is give you all the uh, lessons I've learned as an owner of one of these bikes for the last six months. So uh, I'm gonna show you what the bike's like to ride in different scenarios, in the wet, in the dark, that sort of thing. I'm gonna talk a bit about cost of ownership, and then I'm gonna give you uh, the rundown of the lessons I've learned on this bike. The sorts of things you wouldn't necessarily find out if you just had, say, a half an hour test ride. So if you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. This video's for you. So how about the urban environment on the Speed Twin? How does the bike fare? Well, on the whole, pretty good. The bike feels nice and light when you're riding her. She's nice and narrow and small, so uh, easy to filter your way through traffic. Sitting nice and upright, so you can see sort of over the traffic and work out what your strategy is going to be for getting past. And if you do get stuck in long lines of traffic, the bike's quite low, so you can get your feet flat on the deck. Nothing intimidating about riding this bike. The only thing I would say with regards to uh, riding in uh, town with this bike is that as it comes from the factory, the slow speed fueling is a bit iffy. It's one of the worst bikes I've ridden for that. I've managed to sort it out on mine because I've uh, got a few fixes. Number one, I've got something called a booster plug fitted that gives it a squirt of extra fuel at slow speed. Gets around some of that Euro 4 strangulation. Worth checking out. But that alone doesn't fix the, uh, the slow speed snatchiness on the bike. The thing that really did it for me was fitting the uh, throttle spacer kit just inside the throttle housing. I've done, made a video on that very subject. I'll put a link up in the corner somewhere. That's just of cheap well, it's about 30 quid for a tiny bit of plastic, but in terms of value for money, it's an excellent fix for just taking away the sort of slow speed jerkiness that the bike can exhibit. So, as it is now, I have no problems riding the bike through traffic and in the urban environment, but uh, brand new, these bikes do need a little bit of fettling to make them run nice and smooth, I think, anyway. So it's a sort of that for uh, <laughs> the urban environment. How about riding the uh, Speed Twin in the wet? Well, it's been a pretty horrible day today. It's stopped raining now, but it's been raining all morning, so the roads are pretty slippery. And this is the first decent rain we've had for a while, so the roads are as bad as they get. But luckily, the Speed Twin is laden with technology to help you when you're riding in the wet. So of course, it's got uh, decent ABS and also traction control, which are definite pluses to have on damp roads. And of course, with uh, the ride-by-wire throttle, you do get selectable engine mode. So I've got her in rain mode now. See down there, just, so just uh, softens up the throttle response a little bit, makes things a little bit less aggressive. And it's a great thing to have if you're gonna be riding in the wet. The bike itself, as standard, comes with Pirelli Rosso 3 tyres, or at least mine has done. And I'm not sure they're tyres that are well known to be great in the wet, but I have to say I've had no issues. I've ridden on wet rides a few times since I've had the bike. And I've not had any, uh, any concerns with grip. They're certainly better than the tyres I have on my street triple. I've got the Pirelli Rosso Corsas on there. And those are a little bit tricky and wet if you're not careful. but. Uh, yeah, no issues in the wet on the uh, Speed Triple. Speed Triple? Speed Twin. Gosh, got myself at it now. It being a naked bike, of course, if you are riding it when it's actually raining, as opposed to just wet as it is at the moment, then of course you are open to all the elements, so you do get a load of spray at you, but that's to be expected on a naked bike. And uh, the Speed Twin is no different to any others in that respect. So overall, if you've got a ride in the wet, then the Speed Twin, perfectly good bike to do it on. So uh, thumbs up from me.
Okay, modifications then. What have I done to the bike? It's always nice to make a bike your own, isn't it? Well, in the case of the Speed Twin, the honest answer is I haven't done a lot because it's one of those rare bikes that I think just looks nice as it comes out the factory. You don't need to change too much on it. It's already got things like bar end mirrors and stuff. It looks good. And from the rear, I think the bike looks absolutely epic. Uh, I just think it's a, a brutal, uh, mean looking bike. But I have made a few mods and I've made videos on this as well. First one is uh, Tail Tidy. Uh, this here is from Tech Bike Parts. I'll put a link up in the corner somewhere uh, for fitting that that just neatens up otherwise there's a big sort of plastic bit that hangs out here i've also got a slightly smaller number plate the british number plate standard are massive so that's slightly smaller not so small that it's going to be obviously illegal which it technically is but uh, just small enough that it, i think it looks better so that's one mod that i did um the only other mods that i've done are i've got a booster plug on here which uh, just richens the um um mixture slightly uh, when you're at a standstill at idle uh, just because bikes come out of the factories these days uh, with very lean mixtures and uh, it just gives it a bit more it just makes the slow running a bit better the booster plug uh, and also linked with that the uh, potential for jerkiness on pull away i've got in here a uh, a throttle um spacer plug as well a little uh, plastic gadget that's uh, that's inserted in there just makes the throttle just gets rid of any slack in there and makes it easier to ride at slow speed again i've got a video on that very subject i'll put a link up in the corner makes all the difference it's uh, it's only a tiny bit of plastic um but it makes all the difference to the bike it's uh, it's the best mod that i've done bar none the throttle spacer definitely recommend that for the triumph speed twin uh, other than that I think that's it for mods on the bike. Oh, I did put, uh, as I showed under the seat there, I've got just a, a USB lead that runs underneath the tank and then ends up up here so that I can plug my phone in uh, when I've got it mounted on the handlebars. Uh, but other than that, I think the bike is perfect. It doesn't need any other modifications at all. That's all I've done on the bike. Right, before I just show you what the lights are like at night on the Speed Twin, let me just show you what the... Uh lights are like during the day it's got one of those little quirks about the old uh, speed twin that a few of the tramps have so when the bike is uh, like this with the lights just switched to the normal mode and turned on you get a dipped headlight which looks like that okay and then this is the bit that annoys me slightly is if you want the daytime running lights you hit this button here you know you should now get the green light comes on here and then you get the daytime running light, which is this fancy bit at the bottom, which looks cool, and I like that, but my view is the daytime running light is the one that should come on by default, and you don't have a green light on the dash for, that should just be coming on, uh, and then if you want to go to dipped headlights, which you'd want to do at night, then you switch the lights on, not the other way around. To me, this is the wrong way around. Anyway, small point. Uh, so that's what the lights look like during the day. Let's uh, jump on, and with the magic of YouTube, uh, I'll show you what they're like at night. So with the magic of movies, nightfall has happened. <laughs> Here I am riding at night on the Speed Twin. As ever, the GoPro won't show up uh, the lights as effectively as uh, would be ideal. You'll have to sort of go take my word for it a bit with the lights. So I'm on dip at the moment and uh, there's a good spread of the lights and it uh, runs a reasonable way forward. If I go to full beam, there we go, now that, that uh, throws loads of light out towards front and out the sides as you'd expect and a good uh, long beam as well, so on full beam is absolutely brilliant on dip beam, uh, can't see that far ahead to be fair, but on full, brilliant unlike some of its uh, brothers, the switch gear on the Triumph Speed Twin isn't lit at night some of the other modern Triumphs do have lit switch gear now but the Speed Twin isn't one of them, luckily the switch gear isn't that complicated, so it doesn't really matter. But I would have liked to have seen it lit nonetheless. I must say though, the retro dials that are so lovely on the Speed Twin look beautiful at night, lit up in that white. Nice and clear. Really, really nice. Hopefully the GoPro can show that up. I'm not a huge fan of riding motorcycles at night. I tend not to do it unless I have to. But I have to say, the Speedy, not bad at all. Lights work well, gauge is nice and easy to see. Thumbs up from me for riding the Speed Twin at night.
Okay, so to a few practical matters to do with the speed twin. These are the things that people sometimes ask me to show uh, when I do bike reviews. So uh, first off, uh, pumping the tires. Sometimes people ask, is it easy to do that on the bike? What are the valves like? Well, as you can see on this one, we've got the uh, little right angle valve. So that makes uh, actually pumping the tires up okay. Uh, another thing, of course, is lubing the chain. Unusually on this, uh, the chain is actually on the right hand side of the bike. As you can see, uh, I'm used to uh, chains being on the other side for some reason, but on there, it's there. Uh, it's got the chain guard in the way, uh, exhaust, etc. It's quite hard to get at, and there is no center stand, of course. So uh, lubing the chain is a bit of a faff on here. You have to kind of get it under here, and you have to move the bike around about on the driveway to do it yourself to get stuff moving. So that's a bit of a pain. Um, the other thing that people ask me is about the, um, how do you check the oil? Is it a dipstick or is it a sight glass? I'm pleased to say on here, it's a sight glass. We've got the sight glass just there. So again, you know, faffing about having to sort out with dipsticks. You just ride the bike when it's warm. You make sure she's upright. Uh, you will need an assistant to hold it upright and you can check in the sight glass for the oil. So that's a good thing. Uh, what else do people ask? Oh, horn. People often ask, what's the horn like on the bike? So let me give you a quick blast of that. You know what we've done with the keys. Here we go. Turn her on. And the horn on here. Quite shrill, nothing special. Uh, in fact, the horn on my Royal Enfield is better, but it's perfectly adequate. Uh, another thing people ask me is what's it like under the seat? So I'll try and take this off with one hand. To get the seat off, there's, as usual, there's a little lock down here. Uh, sorry about this, there we go. Give the, actually, I might have to put the camera down. Bear with me. Go, off comes the seat. And then underneath the seat looks like this. There really is no spare room here. There's no storage, not even for a McDonald's. You can see here we've got the uh, USB socket, which I've got my um, cable plugged into that goes up for my phone on the handlebars. But other than that, it is absolutely packed under here. So no spare room at the inn under the socket. Uh, and I think that's about it for the practical items. I think I've covered everything. Actually, I just watched that bit back and uh, I did miss something. So uh, just before we finish off with the practical items, people often ask me, what's it like seat position in terms of what does it look like with me sat on it? So I'll jump on the bike here and I'll show you where my feet go. Flat footed, no problem at all. Relaxed at the knee as well. All right, where were we? Uh, and I think that's about it for the practical items. I think I've covered everything. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's it for now. All right, to one of my favorite subjects, cleaning the Speed Twin then. Well, it being a naked bike, um, it does pick up an awful lot of uh, cack as you ride the machine. As you can see, particularly around the back here, uh, there's quite a lot of dirt here around the shock and the uh, exhaust and underneath the mud guard at the rear and of course at the front here uh, as you'd expect where the wheel throws up a lot of dirt around the radiator here so uh, lots of cleaning for me to do here uh, this is about as dirty as my bike gets it being a naked machine means that it's uh, it's not particularly easy or particularly hard i'd say it was um it's easier to clean than a big adventure bike because it's got quite as much scaffolding um but it's uh, not as straightforward as a sports bike that is covered in fairings anyway i'll crack on and, uh, and clean it and we'll see how she comes out There we go, so one beautifully clean bike uh, once again. And as I thought, yeah, sort of middling bike to clean. Uh, not too hard, not too easy either. Fair amount of bits and pieces to get into. Uh, what I use there to clean it, just in case you're wondering, because I've been using some different products recently, I use something called uh, uh, S-Doc, well it's called S-Doc 100 uh, Total Cleaner, which I sprayed on the bike to start with, and that gets all the loose stuff off. I left it there while I had a cup of tea for about 20 minutes and then just rinsed it off and that got most of the dirt off, which was brilliant. And then uh, dried it with my bike dryer as usual. Uh, and then again, I used a bit of, uh, again, from the same company, S-Doc 100, some wax just to finish off on the painted areas, just to give it a bit of, uh, bit of protection. But it's come up beautifully. So uh, yeah, where it was all dirty before, down here, around the back, all looking lovely. And uh, down the front end as well, all beautifully clean again. Normality resumed. Okay, so at the start of the video, I told you I'll tell you a little bit about cost of ownership for the Speed Twin. And of course, as I've owned this for six months, I can give you the real cost as opposed to uh, kind of guesses as how much one of these might cost. And then we can uh, multiply that up for a 12 month cost as well to get, give an annual sort of cost of ownership. Anyway, what have I spent on the bike so far? The things that you have to spend, well, 
First up, vehicle excise duty, or road tax as we call that. If you pay it as a one-off hit, because it's over 600cc, you pay the biggest amount, which is £91 for a year. So we'll have to divide that down to get the six-month cost. Insurance on this bike uh, cost me £127.17 with a £350 excess. Now, of course, that's only indicative. It only applies for somebody like me, my age, where I live, uh, with my uh, no claims bonus, etc. But £127.17, I thought, was a pretty good uh, price for insuring a new bike. Uh, and then servicing wise, um, so far I've only had the 600 mile service done on this. This has a 10,000 mile service interval. I've not ridden it for 10,000 miles yet. So it's only been the 600 mile uh, service. That was from Triumph North London. Uh, great chaps up there. Go and say hello to them. They're up in Watford. Uh, they charged me 90 pounds for the 600 mile service. So uh, if you add that lot up, it comes to 199 pounds and uh, eight pence. Uh, that's because I've halved the tax cost, by the way. Um, because that was an annual cost, if you follow me, my drift. So £199.08 so far for six months, that's £33 a month so far the bike has cost me. Now, of course, if you had the bike for longer than that uh, and you get uh, a bigger service done, uh, then you'd expect that cost to go up. And in fact, that you know, I'd expect the normal annual service to be around about £220 on this bike. When you do the calculation up then for 12 months, it still only comes out as £36.55 a month cost of ownership, not including any, um, you know, consumable items like uh, tyres etc which you would need to replace at some point but uh, pretty cheap bike to run I've done a lot of these calculations overall that is top value 36 pounds a month to run one of these uh, very good value indeed um, I just shows you I think how under how little stress this engine is under um, and uh, to you know, give you a 10,000 mile service interval I think that's where the cheap cost comes anyway that's what I've spent on us so far in terms of running it Okay, so what about faster roads on the speed twin, dual carriageways, motorways, that sort of thing? Well, first I must say, this is a bike that I've never thought needed more power. So in terms of speed, absolutely no problem here. I'm doing 70 miles an hour, but the bike's doing 4,000 RPM. It's completely comfortable and it's got loads more to give if I want it. So no problems with the power. How about uh, protection from the weather? Well, of course, it's a naked bike, so I'm in the wind blast. But the good news is, it's an entirely clean airflow that I'm getting. I'm not being buffeted around by turbulent air, so that's good. Uh, there's not much frontal air on the bike, so I am in. I am getting the full blast of the wind, though. At, uh, you know, at my legs and at the top of my body. I'm used to riding naked body, uh, bikes. It's not a problem for me. Uh, so yeah, no problem on faster roads. To so say bags of power, and you're not buffeted around by turbulent air. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for the Speed Twin on faster roads. Okay, so this is a living with type review, which means I like to cover everything. So I'm off to my uh, favourite local station car park, Great Missenden train station, to do what I call my lugging about test. This is designed to simulate what it's like moving the bike around on your driveway. And also, uh, it's a chance to check out what the turning circle's like. So I'm going to come up the end here, find myself a couple of clear parking spaces. Just uh, get a bit of a feeling for the weight and show you what the turning circle's like as I say so if I park smack in the middle of one of these standard parking spaces here we go easy to find neutral easy to find the stand alrighty here we go then okay so here she is no sort of grab handles or anything on the back to grab hold of so uh, to move it around obviously it's a hand on the seat job but no problem at all uh, feels relatively heavy when you move it off the stand. You don't have to move it very far, so it's not a big heft. All right, let's uh, come round then at full lock and uh, see what the turning circle's like. So around we go. It doesn't feel heavy at all, actually. It feels fine. And there we go. So that's a full 180 degrees. Quite a respectable turning circle, actually. So I started in the middle of this one here. So that's basically two... Uh, standard parking spaces on full lock. I have had bikes that take more, much more than that. I have taken some that do it tighter. As it goes, that's a fairly uh, reasonable turning circle. Um, yeah, no problem there at all. And as I say, lugging it about, no distance to get it off the stand. It's quite a low uh, bike, you know, it's physically quite small. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to really have any problems moving this around on their driveway. So uh, there we go, that's me lugging about test on the Speed Twin. How about taking the speed twin away on holiday and doing a bit of touring? 
what are the merits of that? Well, I would say they're quite good actually. Of course you can tour on any bike, can't you? But some are better than others. As far as the Speed Twin is concerned, in terms of luggage, there's uh, some Triumph options available for the bike, not top boxes and panniers, but there is like a side pannier leather case thing that you can get that carries a certain amount. I'm not a massive fan of those. I used one of those when I uh, borrowed the um, Scrambler from Triumph, the 1200, and actually I, I did find it quite useful for day-to-day -day transport stuff, but for touring, not quite capacious enough. So in terms of uh, luggage carrying capability, not that great. You're going to be rucksacked up and you're going to be using a tank bag. Yeah, but that's fine if you're touring one up. Uh, not so good, of course, if you're touring two up. The seat itself, I find it quite comfortable for an hour or so. After an extended period of time, the seat can get a little bit uncomfortable. But I've ridden worse, so uh, not too bad on that score. Weather protection, well, it's a naked bike, as I've said, so, you know, if you are on long motorway stretches, you're going to uh, get wet. But once you get to your destination, the Speed Twin is such a fun bike to ride, then you're going to have an absolute hoot through the twisties on this bike. So practicality, if you're going away on tour, I think if you're one up, then you'll have an absolute ball on the Speed Twin. If you uh, tour two up, I think probably uh, look elsewhere other than the Speed Twin for your touring fix. Okay, I promised you I would give you the lessons I've learned on the, the bike since I've owned it. Uh, not just the good things, but the bad things too. Uh, no bike's perfect, is it? So let's start off with my list of negatives. As usual, I've written these down to make sure I don't forget anything. So first thing, and these are in no particular order, uh, seat. Uh, looks good, but it is a little bit thin. Uh, I'm not saying it's terribly uncomfortable, but it could be a bit better. If you can do long, long rides, I mean, I just use this for blatting around the lanes and stuff, but if you can go touring or something on it, you might want to consider a comfort seat. Uh, not terribly uncomfortable, but it is a bit thin. Looks good, but it might be a case of um, you know, form over function. Next thing, uh, suspension. Um, although, again, it's adequate, I find if you really push on, uh, it can become a little bit, a uh, little bit bouncy. Uh, if you hit, say, a bump mid corner, the bike can get a little bit unsettled. It's not a big deal. In the main, I find the suspension is okay on the bike. But uh, as I say, once you're pushing on, can be a little bit bouncy around the corners compared to other bikes that I know and love. Um, next up, I've written down here fuel range indicator. It does have a range indicator, which is nice, but doesn't seem too reliable in that it counts down uh, and then it can get to no range left for what seems like some time. In fact, I saw uh, a write-up in MCN a few months back, somebody that had one of these bikes, and I think they said they rode for another 25 miles when the indicator said no miles left. So the fuel range indicator does give you an indication, but don't rely on it. Luckily, it seems that Triumph have erred on the cautious in that when it says you've got nothing left, you have still got a bit more. Nice that it's got a fuel range gauge at all, though. Um, the fuel gauge itself, again it does have a fuel gauge, I'm pleased to say, I, it's one of my um, hates is when bikes don't have uh, fuel gauges. Uh, this one, uh, like all tramps it seems to me, once you fill the bike up it takes a little while to recognise that, something to do with the capacitor in the circuit I think, uh, not a big deal, it's just a little annoyance for me. Uh, something that is a bit more of an annoyance, the front brake on here does squeak a little bit. Uh, it's got a bit of squeal about it. It's not, in the case of this particular bike, it's not loud enough that it's, um, it's, it's something that I'm going to do anything about. Just once in a while, when you brake, you hear a little bit of squeal from the front. I've heard this from other owners of these as well. I've certainly got it too. Uh, it's not as annoying as other bikes that I've ridden. I've ridden, there are other Triumphs that have suffered from this. I think the, um, might have been the Speedmaster or the Bobber had a similar issue. It's not as bad as that on this bike, but there is a little bit of squeal at the front end. Just a little bit annoying on a premium machine. Uh, next thing, ah, the daylight running lights on this. I've mentioned this before on Triumphs. So I think they've just got this the wrong way around. It's very bizarre. Uh, the DRL has to be uh, switched on. Um, now let's, let's get this right. I talk about this a bit, well I have talked about it a bit when I did the night riding, so I, hopefully I've explained it better then. But basically, when the DRL is on, the light is off, and when the light is off, the DRL is on. It just seems the wrong way around to me. Watch my little bit on the night segment, which you will have already seen, or is coming up for more on that. That's a bit annoying. Um, the engine, um, in the summer, not too much of a problem in the UK, but it does give off a lot of heat. If you live in a hot country, uh, the heat out of the engine might be an issue. For some odd reason, I found that the left rear is where it gives off most heat. I don't know why that is. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's got exhaust on either side. You'd think the bike would be symmetrical as far as heat's concerned. But left rear, I find, gets a bit hotter than left right. And uh, if it's a hot day, that could become an issue. And if you live in a hot country, something to be aware of. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the throttle. 
can be a bit snashy at low speeds. Now, I've got that fixed on mine with the modifications that I've done. I've got a booster plug and I've got a throttle spacer, as I talked about before, on this bike. And now the, uh, the um, low speed control on my throttle is beautiful. But as they come from Triumph, it is a little bit snatchy, easily fixed, but you shouldn't really have to do that on a new bike, should you? All right, that's it for the negatives. Let's get on to the more interesting, positive stuff. Okay, on to the, positives, uh, the positive lessons I've learned about the bike then. What are they? Well, first off, uh, and this is pretty, uh, I mean, it's a subjective point, but I think it's obvious. I think the bike looks absolutely fabulous. I mean, just look at it. It is a beautiful bit of kit. The, um, I think, particularly from the back end, this bike looks good. Triumph have got this bike pretty much right um, from all angles, I think, and it doesn't need much uh, modification in terms of its aesthetics. I just think it's a beautiful looking bike. The fit and finish is lovely on it. It is a nice bit of kit. Purely a subjective thing, but obviously that's one of the things that attract me to the bike. It looks like a motorcycle should look. I think it's a lovely looking machine. All right, maybe point on that one. Next one, build quality. Triumph do this so right these days. They've absolutely upped their build quality. Every bike they bring out seems that they've uh, upped it once again. If you look at the finish of the paint on here, things like the way that the, um, the um, Triumph logo is um, done on the tank. I don't even know how they've done that, but it's very clever. It's got hand-painted coach lines on here, which are just done beautifully. Uh, just things like the attention to detail. This um, sort of little cover here looks like something out of um, Flash Gordon, but I think it's a, a nicely finished bit of kit. Uh, the way that it says Speed Twin on the side cover, the way the, the clocks of it, I mean, just, just everything on this bike is beautiful. It is a, a lovely quality feeling premium machine now, as all Triumphs are. And this one up the bar once again, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the engine on this absolutely pulls like a train. It's the 1200, uh, what's it, the uh, high power version, they call it. This is the one that comes out of the Triumph Thruxton. So it rides a bit like a Thruxton, but a bit more upright. It's a, it's a lovely engine. It just pulls like a train. Uh, I love it. It's a great unit. So the engine is another thing that's a positive for me. And linked to that, it sounds absolutely brilliant as well. I've got the uh, Vance and Heinz pipes on here, which aren't particularly loud, actually. They're not annoyingly loud, but they've just got a lovely sort of pop on the overrun. I think the engine sounds absolutely beautiful on this. Uh, not only does it look and sound good, but uh, also the handling on it is amazing. It's got really nice light handling. It uh, it's just feels like a light bike when you're riding it. There's no drama involved. There's no, there's no feeling you're going to drop it when you come to a stop. It's just an easy, forgiving bike to ride with beautiful light handling. So that's the next thing I love about it. Next up, and I mentioned this just now, the clocks on here. I've actually written here, no silly TFT like the Scrambler 1200, uh, which might be a bit unkind to the Scrambler 1200, but this has these proper beautiful clocks on here. I love these on the Triumph. I think if you're going to have a retro bike, it just looks better if it has dials on it rather than a TFT, and the dials on this are second to none. They're beautiful. They're like watches made in Switzerland. So that's something I love about it. And also I love the fact that it's got two of them. One of the things that puts me off things like the... Um, the street twin is the fact that it has that plastic and the bobber in fact the single plastic dial uh, I definitely prefer it when it has the two like the T120 and indeed this and the Thruxton they are absolutely beautiful uh, next thing perfect seat height for me this although I mentioned that the seat can be uncomfortable on longer runs this is nice and low I can get my feet on the deck as you saw earlier it is an absolutely uh, great seat height really forgiving for me I'm five foot eight I find the riding position on here really comfortable the other thing I've written down here, can suit all, mo all moods, relaxed, lazy cruising or thrashing. This really is a bike that you can do it all on. I use this, as I mentioned, as a sort of a Sunday afternoon lazy ride through the lanes. But if you want to open her up, she does feel like she's going to rip your arms off. It is a brute of a bike when you want it to be. There is no lack of power. But because it is a big, talky engine, you can ride it lazy if you want to. You don't have to change the gears a lot. It'll just thud, thud, thud through. It's just brilliant on that. It's got, as I say, it's uh, kind of a wolf in sheep's clothing bike if you want it to be or you can ride it lazily i love that about it and then last i've written down here and i mentioned this in the negatives the engine runs hot this time of year it's cold at the moment when i'm recording this uh, actually in blight it's quite nice having a warm engine it warms you up a bit might not be the case if you're in a hot country of course anyway they're the top things that uh, i've learned about the bike in terms of the positives so far Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, long-term owner's review, my in-depth review of the Triumph Speed Twin so far from six months in. Uh, I may well do uh, another review, maybe a year down the line and give you my uh, one year, six months or one year. Anyway, stay tuned for more reviews on this bike. There's going to be lots more riding coming on this bike. I may do a little tour on it as well in the future, um, but it is a beautiful bike. I'm really pleased I bought it. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, yeah, I thoroughly recommend the Speed Twin to the house if you're interested in one. I've been very pleased with this bike 
as you can tell. All right, I hope you found that uh, of interest. I don't just do uh, bike reviews here on the Mission and Flyer. Uh, if you've not seen my channel before, uh, do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along. I do stuff here in the garage about how to look after your bike. I do uh, trips and tours on the bike at home and abroad. I do uh, uh, monthly bike news on the channel. Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I try and cover it here on the Mission and Flyer. It'd be great to have you along. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already, and the little notification bell as well. That way, you'll be told when I post new videos. Hopefully. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. and Fly. Cheerio. And today's van of choice, the Volkswagen Transporter. Not in white, though, unusually. It's the grey version. And uh, this one has come with the TDI engine. Or oh, 66 plate. Cracking van, just as well, because it's an half block of you when you're stuck behind it on your bike.